Let's take a look at the least understood of all nutrients, vitamin B12. It's a huge molecule. It's long been known as the energy vitamin, and rightly so. You need to have lots of it in your body in order to thrive and to protect yourself from fatigue and degenerative conditions. You see, B12 plays a major role in DNA synthesis, in the formation of healthy blood cells, and the production of energy in your mitochondria. Yet, vitamin B12 deficiency is now rampant. At least one in four people in the Western world are seriously deficient in this essential nutrient. Meanwhile, 50% of the population in the world now has blood levels of B12 in the suboptimal range. Why should you care about making sure that you have enough B12? Well, first of all, this remarkable vitamin is essential for building myelin in your body. Now, myelin is a fatty material that encloses the axons of neurons. It provides a sheath of electrical energy around your cells so that your nervous system functions just as it's meant to do. This helps nerve impulses move speedily and makes it possible for the cells all over your body to communicate with each other. But when the myelin sheath is damaged, the body becomes prone to all sorts of degenerative conditions spinal cord injuries, and multiple sclerosis and stroke, for instance. You see, your body needs an abundance of B12 for many other purposes as well. It's essential for adrenal hormone production, for maintaining a healthy immune system, for having balanced moods and experiencing good memory function and mental clarity, as well as physical and emotional vitality. If you don't have adequate levels of B12 in your blood, you're more likely to experience tingling in your hands, uh, your legs, your feet, uh, weak muscles, problems with memory, apathy, even depression. A scientific term for vitamin B12, uh, this water-soluble nutrient, is cobalamin. But unlike other water-soluble vitamins, B12 is not rapidly removed from your body when you urinate. Instead, it's taken into your kidneys, your liver, and other important organs where it may remain for long periods. So you can be deficient in B12, yet not know it for several years, simply because your body has not been absorbing B12 from your foods. Perhaps the most important cause of B12 deficiency is what is known as food cobalamin malabsorption syndrome because your body is not making what is known as, and this is really important, intrinsic factor. Now, intrinsic factor is a protein made by your stomach that binds to B12, and what it's meant to do is to grab the B12 molecule as it passes through the small intestine, carry it on into the large intestine, where it can be absorbed into the body and eventually end up in your bloodstream. However, if you're depleted of stomach acid, as many people are, especially if they've been using antacid medications or eating a lot of cereals and grain-based carbohydrates, which of course create gastric reflux and indigestion, then you're likely to be low in stomach acid. And when stomach acid is decreased in this way, intrinsic factor cannot absorb B12. And if that happens, your health suffers. As we get older, levels of vitamin B12 in our bodies decrease. A study of over 100 older men and women showed that we become more susceptible to atrophy or, or shrinkage in the brain. Of course, this is a, a well-known characteristic of Alzheimer's disease and of dementia. Okay, so what do you do about it? Here are a few habits you will want to avoid to help prevent this. First, don't drink more than three or four cups of coffee each day at the most. Even better, limit yourself to organic fair trade coffee only and drink only one or two cups a day. Next, stop taking prescription drugs that diminish B12. Next, do not use antacids and other drugs to treat ulcers. Instead, change the way you're eating then you'll find that most of these problems clear up naturally within a few weeks.
Finally, never take antibiotics unless they are absolutely necessary. If you do, make sure you counter their effects by using a top-quality probiotic for several weeks as soon as the antibiotics have finished. Okay. How do you make sure you get enough vitamin B12? Well, it's difficult to manage if you're a vegetarian, but it's possible. It's virtually impossible if you're a vegan. Eggs are a good source of vitamin B12, provided they come from a free-range, pastured farm. If they're genuinely free-range, a great way to eat eggs is to put them raw into some sort of smoothie. Good sources of vitamin B12 are also found in organic chicken, grass-fed beef, grass-fed lamb, and seafoods that do not come from fish farms. Unfortunately, and this is something few people are yet aware of, more than half of the seafoods in the world are now contaminated with heavy metals and harmful materials because they're raised in fish farms where these fish are brought up on quite hideous foods. Certified grade A raw milk also contains good quantities of vitamin B12, provided, of course, that you can handle milk easily. Now, there are medical tests that you can take if you suspect you may be B12 deficient. Your health practitioner can organize this as well as helping determine the underlying cause of your deficiency and how it should be treated. The problem with these tests is very often they are not terribly accurate, and as few doctors are aware of the seriousness with which vitamin B12 deficiencies must be treated, they're not the best way to go. You can, of course, look for one of the -the under-the-tongue sprays, although the human body often does not absorb these terribly efficiently either. Personally, I prefer occasional B12 injections. It is still legal in many countries for you to do these yourself. If you live in a country where they are not legal, your health practitioner can inject them for you. What is important is that when you have an adequate supply of this vitamin in your body, especially as you get older, you help prevent many potentially life-destroying conditions that result in a vitamin B12 deficiency. Mm -hmm.